Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to make a nighttime roller coaster card and paint it in just three watercolors. And we're going to see how that works out. I'm going to use the Coaster Critters stamp set from Lawn Fawn. Got lots of fun little critters to go to the amusement park, and since it's summertime, it's a great idea to make a card like this. And I'll use the slider die that you can get in addition to the stamp set and use it to make a slider out of the roller coaster portion. So the way that I'm using this, I'm going to use two Misties to set this up. And I've got my roller coaster, the main roller coaster set up on the Misty, and then I tucked the die in so that it will line up when I go to make the second panel. There's going to be a back panel and a front panel. And then I put a sheet of acetate in here because I wanted to set up on my second Misty the other elements that are going to go in the front of the card and do the masking portion. So this little acetate piece is going to help me to move everything over to the other Misty and then leave this one so that I can stamp that roller coaster after I get the other images in. So I have the acetate down and I'm going to line up all my little images. I wanted a row of little guys standing in line and I played around with whether or not they would hold things or not. That seemed like way too much masking so I ended up not doing a lot of that. But I stamped three of the critters, left space for one more. And I'm using Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink for this and Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper, by the way. And then I moved everything over and just used a post-it note to stamp one more of the foxes. So I'll have two foxes in line. And then I got out my Eclipse tape and made masks for each one of these. So I stamped them onto that and cut them out so that they would block off the parts that I didn't want to have um, showing. Taped it down with some washi tape because things don't stick too well to the bumpy watercolor paper and then stamped my image, the, the roller coaster that's going to be behind them all. And you can see when you pull off all those masks, it looks like the critters are now in front. And then I masked off a little bit so I could put a bunny into the ticket booth and I added the balloons to it as well. So that's going to be the front panel. The back panel has the slider portion in it, and I also wanted some other roller coasters back there, but I didn't want that horizontal cutoff. I wanted them to look like they're continuing on down below the front roller coaster, which you'll see how that plays out. So I used some sticky notes to mask out just that bottom section, and then I wanted to make the little cars. There's a trio of little cars. I wanted to bend them along the edge up here, so instead of cutting them apart entirely, I cut them apart just a little bit so that I can kind of nudge the front car and the back car so that they align with the curve. So then I took a pen, which is a waterproof little Sharpie pen, just a regular old normal Sharpie, and drew in the extra pieces that were then missing because I'd masked out that horizontal portion at the bottom. So now it looks like I have taller sections of roller coaster in the back. And then I've got my, my piece down here. I'm going to trim this out later. And also my little car that's going to be the slider portion. And I masked out the car in order to stamp the bear. And I'm going to be using this little wrist palette that I used when I was in Puerto Rico recently. If you haven't seen my mini palettes video, I will link that at the end of this one because it's a really fun little video with some fun travel palettes that I used. And now I'm going to speed it up for the painting portion, but I'm only going to use the three colors that are in that mini palette. I really liked using this palette. I tend to use bigger brushes when I do plein air painting. And when I was in Puerto Rico, there will be a fundraiser of all the paintings later this summer. Uh, when I was in Puerto Rico, I was painting and it was really helpful to have tiny palettes to take with me. And I tested a bunch of them out. This was one of my favorites because my big brushes fit into those big wells in it. So I'm painting Moon Glow at the top and Sap Green at the bottom. The bottom is not going to show, but I wanted to test and see what it's going to look like to have some Moon Glow mixed with the Sap Green. And it was a really nice color that it made between the two of them. So I used that portion for practice. And then I'm going to paint the background on this other piece because I'm going to have that one layered over top. I'm going to trim out along that top edge but I didn't want to have any white edges potentially showing. So I just painted over a whole bunch and tried to make that outside edge so that it's going to match what's in the background. 
doing both of them at the same time was helpful just so I could make all of that coordinate. And it doesn't really matter whether it's even or not because I'm going to be cutting out a whole lot of that in order to make the layered portion of the card. And then I threw in my green, went right around my little animals and slathered on the green. I will be doing some shading on top of that green later. Around the guy at the top, the one that's going to be on the slider, I want to trim him so that he's got a little room outside of him. So I wanted that moon glow color to be outside of him and then I won't have a white line around him. If you were to do something like die cutting, you know, the die cuts give you that little white edge. You could always color that white edge the same color as whatever's behind. And since there's that nice solid purple behind there, I guess you can call moon glow a purple. It's like a purplish bluish kind of color, the way it splits out. I love Moon Glow for that reason. And I decided I wanted some darker color behind the animals so that they pop more on the card. So I just added another layer on top. And I'm not really worried about whether or not it's even or anything because I'm really just going to have that color floating in the background. And then I want to make the animals look like they are moonlit in the front. So in order to paint browns, it was really cool to mix the yellow ochre that's in that palette. It's yellow ochre, moon glow, and sap green. The yellow ochre and the moon glow make a nice brown, and you can change the variance on the brown by how much moon glow you put in it. And you can do that with any three colors. Just pick three colors that you want to experiment with and make a card or do a painting in just three colors and see what colors mix in which ways. I never would have guessed in a million years that a yellow, a purplish color, and a green would be great for the kinds of scenes that I was painting in Puerto Rico, but I did a beautiful waterfall in these same colors because I was able to mix them in the right ways. And don't have to use these three colors. Try any three colors and see what happens. You never know what kind of colors you're going to get when you mix something. It's just fun to try something new and different. And that is what I am doing here. So I mixed a couple different browns so I could use some warmer browns, like yellower browns for my fox and more kind of chocolate browns for my bears. And then I wanted to use a mostly moon glow color so that I get some shading on the white portions of the animals. Because in the dark, if you go outside in the dark, the colors of everything kind of get muted. They all turn to be about the same color except for a few pops of color. So I'm allowing some of the yellow ochre and a little bit of the green to pop and knocking everything else back. So on the edge of that awning, I'm even mixing some darker colors so that those par portions look like they're in shadow. I use a thick paint and a thin paint of the green to make two of those balloons and then very thick moon glow to make the wheels on my little cars. And uh, then I wanted to add the shadows underneath. So the bottom green part is really dry at this point. So I painted just a little bit of the moon glow underneath of each one. And then at an angle, I'm making long shadows. So it looks like, you know, there's definitely a moon out there. It's casting some really strong shadows. And I'm making just straight shadows. You don't need to always make them look like they're in the shape of the thing because in card making, we're just looking for that impression, that general impression. And rather than trying to make it look bunny shaped or fox shaped, I decided just to do long straight shadows, which I thought would work just great. So this one, since I can't use the little dies to cut around the bear and the car together. I've never quite figured out the math of how you could do that with the die set that you can get with the, the stamps. I'm just doing some fussy cutting and allowing some of that extra color to be around it so that it will cover the whole dime. I'm using dimes for mine instead of pennies because they're thinner and building up some adhesive in between. And I like to put a little bit of be creative tape down and then my dimensional adhesive and then another bit of be creative tape because that sticks to the coin a whole lot better. You can also use a little circle of paper. Just make sure it's smaller or smaller ish than whatever you're putting on it. So that's why I made the car and the bear a little bit wider so that I make sure that they fully cover the image. So when, whenever you're doing a slider card, you need to kind of move it around back and forth a little bit. You can even take a powder tool and shove it in there and put a little, little de-static powder in there to make it slide a little easier. 
and then I glued my little critter on there. Next, I'm using some dimensional adhesive to add the front seam to it. And you can see how fun it's gonna look to have this nighttime scene built up. I've mounted it onto black cardstock and you can't really see it, but I do have a piece of, of watercolor paper underneath painted in the moon glow. So there's just a little strip of it so that when you look through the, the slider, then you'll actually see a little bit of the purple, which it's hard to see there with the lighting. And then I took a white pen and I'm just gonna add some highlights to everything from that moon, which I cut out of a scrap piece of paper. I just did a little circle punch and put it on some dimensional adhesive. And I'm adding the highlights just in the top and kind of right side of each one of the shapes so that they look like they have that strong cast of the moon on top of each one. And it's gonna make them look like they're all outside at night. And you can just go around all the different images and add that on. You can also do this with a white paint, like a, a titanium white, if you're good with a brush. But for something this tiny, it seemed like it was gonna be a lot easier to use a gel pen. I do like to use the Signo gel pen myself because that works great for me. And I know for some people it doesn't, we never have figured out quite why that is, but you know, stuff happens in craft rooms. There's some craft rooms that like the Signo pen and some that don't. But if you have trouble getting it started, sometimes I'll write on my finger because it seems to like a little bit of warmth to kind of loosen it up. And also don't press really hard because there's a ball in there. It's, they call it a uni ball pen. So with a ball, any kind of ball pen, there's a round ball in there that floats in whatever the ink is that's in the pen. And if you press too hard, it doesn't have a chance to, to coat that whole ball with whatever is in the pen. So try writing with it a little bit lighter. I decided there needed to be little creatures <laughs> riding in this roller coaster car out in the distance, but of course they're much tinier than the ones in the front. So I just kind of made little circles for heads and ears and little hands going up in the air. And then in one car, I put two little critters here. You can play around with what kind of things you want to put in there. And you could make it a wild and crazy one, make things flying out of there. If you're doing a Halloween card like this, that would be kind of crazy fun. And then check to make sure everything slides and moves around. You can see a little bit of that purple paper behind there now. And there's my finished card. So much fun. Just put a white layer on the inside of that black card and it's all done and ready to go. And I love the life is full of ups and downs because I have a lot of friends I could send a card like this to, but there's also birthday sentiments and all kinds of others in the stamp set. So excellent stamp set from Lawn Fawn. As always, they have such fun stuff for us to play with. That is it for me for today. There's the video about the watercolor palettes right there for you. And I will see you guys later. Have a really awesome day. Bye-bye.